Okay, in this video I want to do more protein structure problems. Um, I tried recording this video yesterday and I couldn't because it just ran too long. Um, it was like 25 minutes uh, worth of problems. So I'm going to split it up into two different videos. I'm going to start with this question. It says, describe in words and pictures the hydrophobic effect and its importance in protein stability. Well, we talked a lot about the hydrophobic effect. So, what I would start out by saying with this, like the, to, if I were asked to describe in words and pictures the hydrophobic effect and its importance on protein stability, I would say that the hydrophobic effect refers to the tendency of nonpolar substances to arrange themselves such that they minimize their contact with water. So I would say the hydrophobic effect, the hydrophobic effect refers to the tendency so it refers to the tendency of nonpolar substances to arrange themselves such that they minimize their contact with water. So this would be the first thing I would say. So if I were asked to describe the hydrophobic effect, I would say the hydrophobic effect refers to the tendency of nonpolar substances to arrange themselves such that they minimize their contact with water. So that's, that's the first thing I would say. Then I would say the hydrophobic effect is important to protein stability because it is the most major determinant of protein structure. So I would say the hydrophobic effect is important because it is the most major determinant of protein structure. So the hydrophobic effect is important because it is the most major determinant of protein structure. And I would further elaborate on that by saying that proteins fold the way they do because the nonpolar amino acids, or I should say amino acid side chains, minimize their contact with water and are thus found in the interior of the protein. So this would be my complete answer, and uh, you'll have to bear with my terrible handwriting, um, but I will read it to you so that you can hear the answer. It says, the hydrophobic effect refers to the tendency of nonpolar substances to arrange themselves such that they minimize their contact with water. The hydrophobic effect is important because it is the most major determinant of protein structure. Proteins fold the way they do because the nonpolar amino acid side chains minimize their contact with water and are thus found in the interior of the protein. So the reason these proteins begin to fold into the 3D structures that they fold into is because is because they, the nonpolar side chains don't want to be in contact with polar substance like water. And um, this is a way of minimizing that contact. And what that does is that actually leads to an increase in entropy or an increase of disorder in the system. 
And that's very useful here because we know that that's favorable. That's energetically favorable. And that's one of the reasons why proteins fold there. It's energetically favorable for them to fold. There's an increase in entropy associated with the folding process. Now, if I were also asked to draw a picture here, I would just draw what's called a hydrophobic pocket. And I would just do something like this. And I would say, OK, let's draw some uh, hydrophobic residues here. So I'd say, OK, alanine. And maybe I'd do valine up here. So I'd say maybe CH, CH3, CH3. So that would be valine up there. And then over here, maybe I would do another, I don't know, I don't have a lot of space, so another alanine. It really doesn't matter what residues you draw. You just want to kind of show that you got hydrophobic interactions here and hydrophobic interactions here. And that would account for a complete answer, not only describing the hydrophobic effect in words, but in picture. So I think I have enough time to do one more question. So I'll show you what the uh, second question here says. It says, explain why uncharged polar residues can occur on the inside as well as the outside of a water soluble protein. So what they want us to do is explain why we can have both polar residues on the outside of a protein and polar residues on the inside of a protein. So the simple answer here, which it's actually quite simple to start describing, so I'll call this number two. It's actually quite simple to start describing. That is that polar residues tend to be on the surface of proteins because they're polar and they can interact favorably with by hydrogen bonding with the water with water. So I'm going to just basically write that down, and I'm going to say because these residues because these residues are polar, they, I should come in there, they often occur on the surface. So they often occur on the surface of the protein, of the protein. where they can form hydrogen bonds with water. So the thing is, so the first part of this and what I'm going to say is because the residues are polar, they often occur on the surface of the protein where they can form hydrogen bonds with the water. So just remember, it makes perfect sense. I mean, you have a polar residue, it's capable of forming hydrogen bonds in most cases. Um, we, you know, so we have no, nothing really to worry about. We just want to kind of say that there's this interaction going on on the surface. But they said in the question that these polar residues, so these polar residues can also occur on the inside. So since these polar residues can also occur on the inside of the protein, I should say on the inside of the protein, they're asking us why that is. And the reason is because on the inside of the protein, so these polar residues can also occur on the inside of the protein where they can form hydrogen bonds with another polar residue or I should say maybe with other buried residues. With other buried residues. And maybe actually even besides just saying with other buried residues, I might want to say with other buried polar residues. So with other with other buried polar residues is a better way of describing that. Um, this effectively decreases the polarity. So this is another important point here. This effectively decreases the polarity I should say this effectively increases the polarity so that 
the polar residues can interact with the nonpolar. Nonpolar amino acids that occur in the protein interior. Okay, so I think I got this whole thing kind of written out here. I don't know if it's going to help you, like I said, with my handwriting here, but I'll, I'll read you my answer and um, hopefully you'll be able to listen to that and write that down or think about that. So, because these residues are polar, they often occur on the surface of the protein, where they can form hydrogen bonds with the water. These polar residues can also occur on the inside of the protein. So essentially, they can also occur on the inside of the protein as long as they have another hydrogen bonding pair. So as long as they have another polar residue that they can form a hydrogen bond with, they can occur on the inside of the protein. And what that does is that decreases the polarity of these bonds. So that these, these, bond, the, these bonds are no longer as polar as they once were once the hydrogen bond forms, which also effectively allows them to interact with the nonpolar residues that are generally found in the interior of the protein, like we talked about in the hydrophobic effect explained above. So that's why you can have both nonpolar and polar. And very quickly, because I'm definitely running out of time here, very, very quickly, I'm just going to draw a, um, very quickly, I'm going to draw the different effects. I'll draw them on the inside. So if this is my protein here, and I had CH2OH, I had a serine here, that is, and then I had another one over here. So let's maybe say I have the O here and the H. I'll just show something like that. So CH2. Maybe that's not the best way to draw it, so let me draw it again. So I'd have CH2OH, and this is serine, and I'd have the same thing over here, CH2. This time I go OH, and I just show my dotted line forming the hydrogen bond. So this is hydrogen bonding between serine, two serine residues, and this would be on the interior of the protein. Um, if they wanted me to show on the exterior, on the outside of the protein here, interacting with the solvent, I would just draw something like this, and I would say again, maybe I'd have serine again, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you can, you can choose whatever you'd like, but maybe I'd draw that on the outside, and then I'd show maybe my uh, water molecule, something like that, and then I'd show a hydrogen bond up here, and maybe I'd show my other water molecule over here, and show another hydrogen bond there something like that. I mean, just to show that you understand that you can form hydrogen bonds with the, with the water um, or the polar solvent in this case. So hopefully I didn't run over. Thanks.